This is 7 National News and in our top story, the UA President His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed al Nahyan congratulated Donald Trump on Friday on his inauguration as the 45th President of the USA. In his cable, the UA President Khalifa wished Trump success and hoped the UA-US ties would see further growth and also evolve in various fields for the best interests of the two friendly countries and people. The UA Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum and His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, who is also the Deputy Supreme Commander of the UA Armed Forces, also sent similar cables to the new US President. 10% of vehicles in Dubai are set to be electric or hybrid over the next four years as the Emirates sets its sights on green mobility. The Dubai Supreme Council of Energy, in association with the Dubai Electricity and Water Authority and the Road and Transport Authority, has set new targets to cut down carbon emissions by increasing green mobility. The initiative aims at reducing carbon emissions by 16% by 2021 and all government organisations must include hybrid and electric vehicles in their fleets. The initiative targets a 10% share for hybrid and electric vehicles among all new cars purchased between 2016 and 2020. It has also set a target of 2% for all cars in Dubai to be either electric or hybrid by 2020, which will reach 10% by 2030. Emirates Transport has announced the launch of a smart app for road assistance, which is currently in the pilot phase. Mohamed Abdullah Al Garman, the general manager for Emirates Transport, launched a demonstration version of the app that will enable drivers to request aid in the event of a breakdown. The pilot phase only caters to the corporation's fleet of vehicles in order to address any shortcomings in the system before an official launch, which will then be available to the general public. Once up and running, the app will allow drivers to request road assistance should they face mechanical or technical difficulties or in the case of any accidents. The system is linked directly to an operations room at ET's Roadside Assistance Unit, which specializes in providing assistance 24 hours a day to companies and individual clients throughout the state. Mohamed Kofash, the manager of the ET's Roadside Assistance Unit, said that clients can benefit from a wide range of roadside services, including accident recovery, tire replacement, recharging dead batteries, unlocking doors, emergency petrol supply and other services dealing with emergency recovery and repair on the roads, in addition to vehicle registration and renewal services. 25 top-ranking universities from nine countries have participated in a first-of-its-kind Global Education Interact International Fair here in Dubai and in Abu Dhabi, offering on-the-spot admissions and scholarships to UA students that are eyeing study opportunities abroad. The Higher Education Fair was organised in partnership with the Chopras, which is a leading educational consultant group over in India, featuring top universities from the US, the UK, Australia, New Zealand, Europe and Asian countries such as Singapore and Malaysia, who also confirmed scholarships worth 22,000 dirhams for deserving students here in the UAE, with the aim of helping students transition from a high school to a foreign university. The fair provided in-depth counselling, course selection guidance, post-departure briefing and support post-arrival, while also assisting students with university and country selections, accommodation and documents required for visa, finance and immigration issues. While stating that a graduate or master's programme abroad can open up unexplored global opportunities for students, it was stressed that choosing the right programme and the right place for study abroad can make a huge difference, as there are currently a wide range of options for students. Some leading universities participating in the fair stated that the UA, which has the highest number of international branch campuses in the world, has emerged as an important education hub and they will continue to offer new opportunities for students in the UAE. So we're here to find great students in Dubai today and the Chopras Fest moving on to Abu Dhabi 
in a few days. So we've got a very large business school, engineering school, and arts and humanities. So there's lots of great courses and scholarships that we're trying to attract students to. And we know here's a great place for education, a uh, big education hub in the region. And with our familiarity with the choppers, we know that an event like this we're going to be sure to meet some great candidates. The selection criteria will differ by course, but we're looking first and foremost at academics. So in terms of the documents we need, the choppers make it very, very easy. They will guide people through step by step. So the job for me, it's very easy to look at the academics and to advise students about any particular requirements that a particular course may have. Conversation or the career conversation should start happening when the student has hit class nine. Uh, and there should be an ongoing uh, conversation. The subject mix that the student chooses in the 10th and 11th are what's going to determine what the student is going to be able to do in, uh, in, at university. And that subject mix is uh, very important. And that's where the first uh, uh, personality profiling and or aptitude profiling uh, needs to happen. Uh, then, of course, uh, they need to think of what are the deliverables that they're looking for from their education. So after they finish their education, what is it that they want that education to give them? So once that's clarity on that, you are then able to uh, help uh, the uh, student through discussions, informed discussions, uh, you know, to, to arrive at the right answers. Bearing in mind, we do not have the, uh, we, we are not going to say that you do this or you do that. We are going to open the discussion frame. The 17th edition of the Standard Chartered Dubai Marathon once again attracted a large crowd for all three races on Friday morning, with the event also witnessing a new course record by the winner. 25-year-old Tamarita Tola from Ethiopia stole the limelight on Friday morning by completing the 42-kilometer Dubai Marathon in two hours, two minutes and 11 seconds, beating the previous record of two hours, four minutes and 23 seconds, which was set back in 2012. Meanwhile, in the women's category, it was the debutant Degafa de Belle, who finished first with the timings of two hours, 22 minutes and 36 seconds. Both the EP Open runners go home with a cash prize of 200,000 US dollars each, who also beat the favourites in their categories. This year's marathon had an additional prize fund of 250,000 US dollars for breaking the world record, with high hopes of three time Olympic gold medalist Kenanisa Bekele to clinch the new feat. Unfortunately, however, the Ethiopian runner withdrew from the race, showing signs of an injury to his left leg. For the winners, it was a great occasion, however, to grab the winner's prize with the IAAF World Championships in London as their next target. I am happy because uh, uh, I think for future for the rosary uh, on this Dubai, it, it is possible for, for the rosary, I think, if we uh, done exact training, we, we, we run. It is possible, I think. Uh. Thank you for respect all uh, uh, Ethiopian uh, people and all, uh, it, uh, all Dubai people. I I'm, I'm respect them and thank you. This one in the, our country is altitude, everything is high. Here, there is altitude is very low. But in that case, she prepared well, the preparation was very well. This course is too fast and very flat, even for, especially for the uh, newcomer, very important race, very comfortable, no uh, a lot of turns. A total of 30,000 runners had registered to take part in all the three races, which also included a 10K run, followed by a 4K fun run. Over 18,000 had taken part in the 10K this year, with many determined to carry on their New Year's resolutions, which is most probably to lead a healthier lifestyle. There were, however, many who decided to join the races to increase awareness for a cause, while also raising funds for the charities that they support. I was just running because it's something fun to do. It was a beautiful course. It was hot with the sun, but I enjoyed it. It was fun. Uh, my friend and I did it together. We started training two weeks ago. Um, give yourself time. Use an app if you need to. They're always pretty great, and they keep you motivated. Somebody else will as well. Our message, uh, either it is for business or uh, 
in our daily life is going the extra mile. And uh, yeah, it was uh, tough. I didn't train, uh, but uh, I did it in one hour. I'm quite proud of me and of my team. It's uh, UD teams around the globe that are running the marathons. And uh, we keep record of uh, the kilometers we run globally. And it is not about winning or anything. It's just for fun. And uh, we enjoyed it. Yeah, I got 57 minutes actually today. And I'm not much of a long distance runner, but it's great to see so many people here. And that's what encourages you to, to go that extra mile. Yeah, to be honest, uh, I had milestones in mind. So at certain points, like I'd look at landmarks and uh, use that. And when there weren't any landmarks, I'd literally look at the road lines and try and count up to 100 road lines to, to give myself some kind of uh, milestone. We were basically like a bunch of us, about 10 people. And, and we did fly over from, uh, from, from, from Lebanon. And we want to support, uh, the, there is a charity here called Auladuna. Actually, this is, this is an institution that helps the disabled people. And their mo motive is that disabled people are able people. We should not look at them as disabled people. So we, we like to raise this, this awareness for people to realize that we are all the same, even though we have some disabilities, but at the end of the day, we are capable of doing everything we can if we are perseverant enough. And finally, looking to other news now, the inaugural Wasala Music Festival attracted over 5,000 music fans to the Dubai Media City Amphitheatre over the weekend, aiming to establish itself as a platform for creative and performing arts. It celebrated Arabic culture and the dynamic Middle Eastern music scene. The festival featured both established and rising talent, local and regional artists from the Middle East's alternative music scene. The lineup included Mashru Leila from Lebanon, Jadal from Jordan, Salhi and Amel Mathluthi from Tunisia, Suad Massey from Algeria, and representing the UAE, Abri and the Funk Radius. The full day of concerts highlighted a diverse musical genre featuring an eclectic mix of funk, soul, Sufi, reggae, jazz, and electro dance music. Wasala organizers stated that the event is a platform designed to help raise the profile of Arabic musical talent, as well as an opportunity for the community to gain access to established and emerging regional artists. Wasala literally stands for a connection, and that's exactly what we're trying to be. So a connection between all the different uh, Arabic cultures that we have right here in the region, whether it's uh, Emirati, whether it's Palestinian, Jordanian, Syrian, Lebanese, to kind of connect Arabs together, and at the same time, correct Arabic culture in a general sense to the West. It's a message of that we are all here united, and that we all stand for peace, and that we, are, uh, we appreciate all kinds of cultures, and we do that through an appreciation of, of music and the arts in a general sense. The Wasala main stage hosted a wide spectrum of the region's contemporary Arabic musicians. Abri and the Funk Radius represented the UA as the pioneers of the soul scene and have had their songs featured on hit TV shows such as CSI and The Ringer. Salhi is a band made up of Tunisian jazz and Sufi musicians featuring Imed Alibi, who perform tracks from their upcoming album of Sufi, as well as tribal Tunisian songs. Suad Massi, an Algerian singer of Berber descent, enjoys an international following and was a member of band Atakor. Alongside was Jadal, the Jordanian rock band, best known for being one of the first contemporary acts to combine rock melodies with Arabic storytelling. The evening went on to feature Lebanese rock band Masru Leila and acclaimed artist Amel Mathluthi, otherwise known as the Tunisian Bjork. In addition, a side stage managed by the Sound Garden is a UA-based discovery platform for local artists from Dubai. For musicians, Wasala offered the opportunity to expand their creative journey and perform on stages for a wider regional audience. It really depends. I mean, um, sometimes it might be the melody that I have. Uh, maybe it might be some stuff that I wrote and I, I wanted to kind of write about. Or maybe it might just be something that I'm uh, affected by. Um, like example, there's a song called Falling, and I was just, uh, you know, I was just uh, lamenting about what's going on in the world, you know, the bad, the negative stuff. So I mean, I decided to write a song about about that. So it just depends, you know what I mean? Well, Salhe it's a project uh, that was born in um, south of France. It's a fusion between and a meeting, first of all, between me 
Michel and uh, Munir Trudy, who is not here. I will explain later. Uh, the, the idea was um, to connect these two uh, wonderful persons, wonderful musicians, wonderful human beings who traveled a lot into a nice and acoustic project uh, called Salhi, which is a music style from uh, Bedouin southern Tunisia. 